Hello and welcome to a new video. My name is Terry Kuster and today we discuss how to select engineering biopolymers for durable applications. Okay, let us get started. First, uh, let's briefly touch on the motivation of using engineering biopolymers. As I already mentioned in the, in the introduction, durable products usually need engineering polymers such as polycarbonates, uh, polyamides, uh, and so on, because the advantage of engineering polymers is the higher strength, stiffness, and also thermal performance compared to commodity polymers such as polypropylene, polyethylene, so the polyolefins. It's for them a, a challenge also to perform under temperature load. When you think now of engineering biopolymers, we are quite limited for selecting material. Uh, so the bio-derived uh, engineering polymers are few, however, they get more and more. And um, when we think uh, also in terms of consumer, putting on the consumer classes, uh, consumer don't think that engineering polymers are so wasteful material because they are long lasting, for example, in the car. Um, um, so it's compared when you think of packaging materials which are really visible and uh, which are thrown away after a short usage. So when you think also now uh, the consumer perspective also now in 2022 compared to earlier, so it's what we have also now, it's more and more the regulatory affairs which pushing to use more sustainable recycled materials. So this also puts pressure on the material suppliers to offer drop-in solutions for traditional polymer applications and also more and more original equipment manufacturer demand this recycling quote and also bio-based content in their plastic parts. So let's talk about one of the solutions how to, to cope with this. One solution is hybrid material. So hybrid material also, we can say it's blends. When you think of traditional polymers, they also uh, blended to optimize their desired properties. For example, we have here polycarbonate with ABS. When you think of polycarbonate, it has a good impact performance at uh, above uh, room temperature or uh, above zero degrees C. However, ABS has also from minus 40 degrees C to plus uh, 40 degrees a good impact behavior. And by blending this, you can have um, a higher impact behavior with low temperatures and at higher temperatures. And when you think of, for example, polycarbonate with PPT, PPT delivers the, the solvent resistance and uh, polycarbonate impact resistance. So those two together is again uh, uh, a good uh, new material and for example when you think of biopolymers they have properties such as brittleness uh, for example when you think of poly polylactic acid uh, pla and here is a, a, a brief example of a when you can use for example the the bio copolyester pipat which delivers ductility and you blend them with the PLA to have then also the stiffness incorporated and the brittleness removed. And here in this table, I've shown now uh, three blends using PLA and to have a more a higher bio content than of your overall material. For example, PLA PC. Uh, this allows uh, to to use the PLA in durable electronic applications when you blend it with polycarbonate. And you see also here uh, the impact strength is really good improved. Uh, the, for example, a blend PLA with ABS is again the advantage that we have low and high temperature impact behavior. And when you blend with PMMA, PLA, then we have a, a transparent, more transparent material because there are also certain application where we want that. And another solution is to, for example, to use bio-based uh, polyamides. We see them more and more. 
where, uh, for example, um, in the polycondensation, not all the monomers are bio-based. However, you can use one or the other. For example, in the case of polyamide 5.6, five, five, the monomer 1, the, the pentamethylene diamine, is bio-based and the monomer 2, the adipitic acid, not. And as a feedstock, you can use here corn and then you can achieve already 45% uh, bio-based carbon content. You can also, in the case of polyamide 510 here, both monomers to have bio-based, for example, pentamethylene diamine, bio-based and the sebastic acid as well uh, to use corn and castor oil. And when you think of polyamide uh, 11, here we just have uh, one monomer, uh, based on cast oil. So here we have immediately uh, the 100% bio-based carbon content. So this is, we see more and more now such materials um, uh, uh, allowing to replace uh, uh, conventional polyamide 66, PSX and so on. Okay, let's focus now on the material selection. So how we can uh, uh, in a good way, uh, select uh, bio uh, bio based engineering polymers. So in general, engineering polymers, we need to uh, uh, keep the balance between the rigorous property requirements what you have of the application because we have to keep in mind it, it may, may be used in cars or other. Um, mm, um, uh, parts and the, the life cycle impact and the consumer perception so it's uh, we need to find here and uh, what I, I give a thought and for example when you follow those three steps this can help um, to have your improved material selection for example in the first step you can define a maximum allowed uh, environmental impact. This can be a numerical value, for example, the GWP value or the CO2 uh, equivalent value of uh, what you want to, to have your maximum border. And that you can incorporate into the, what I call the semi-quantitative polymer comparison triangle, uh, which is based on price, processing and performance and then you can compare the different polymers to each other. And this we will discuss now here on a, on a, in an in a example. So it's a, it's a visual uh, approach with the triangle. So we have here the, the three corners, the price of the resin, then processing, and here we include also the feedstock sourcing, if it is uh, uh, bio-based or fossil fuel-based. And then on the top of the of the triangle of the pyramid, the performance, and then we have there we also include the use of life and end of life, so recyclability, biodegradability characteristics, and so on. And here in the example, we take an injection or blow molded water bottle. And um, the classic material is PET, so the polyester. So we start here. We have a, a good uh, or good low price and a good performance. However, here um, the feedstock and the processing is uh, is more difficult. So, first thing we can do, we can switch to a bio PET. We see here a horizontal move of the of the of this point, meaning okay, we we go away from the cheaper price. That's true. However, we keep the same performance characteristics however we move more into the processing range on the one hand um, so uh, to to have a better processing of the PET is on the one hand on the other hand the, the, the feedstock sourcing is different however when you think of PET we have a good upcycling of this material so it's a good recyclable material and the next step we can also use then instead of a, a bio PET a PLA. So 
the as, as you can see the the ball is moving a bit further towards processing uh, that means we have higher price that's uh, of the resin uh, we have a bit the lower end of life performance uh, however uh, really better uh, processing and also um, uh, PLA is biodegradable material so this we have to factor in however it's also not so easy to, to compost it and, and store it and uh, in this way uh, uh, you can visually compare the materials and better select uh, to each other in a uh, in, in such a way and um, yeah I would suggest to, to give it a try that you try it out uh, if that can work for you however it's, it's a, I think a good way uh, to to be clear about the sustainability goals and then incorporate it in this triangle price processing performance when you think of uh, water bottles for example when when you have uh, gas filled water bottles or uh, soda drinks then for example materials such as PLA uh, cannot even be used so this we have to also keep in mind okay if you want to have more information on polymer engineering topics I highly recommend you my blog find out about plastics.com as well as my online courses on polymer material selection I will link you both the blog and the online courses in the description below okay which video to watch next so when you here in this uh, uh, video I show you my five favorite uh, polymer material databases so check it out thank you for watching and do not forget to subscribe and smash that like button till next time bye